On Morrowind, the Imperial Province by Era Manwe of Sunhold. After the conquest of Hammerfell, Imperial legions amassed along the northeastern borders of Cyrodiil, and invasion fleets prepared in Skyrim. Initially, though the Imperial legions and navy were widely considered undefeatable, House Indoral and the Temple Hierarchy proposed to resist to the death. Redoran and Dress stood by Indoral, with Telvanni remaining neutral. Lalu proposed accommodation. Contrived border incidents in Black Marsh ended inconclusively, but the swampy terrain did not favor Legion and Navy coordination. Against the Legion's massed west of uh, Silgrad Tower and Craigenmore, and the Legion's west of Blacklight and uh, Cormaris View, uh, Morwen had pitifully small militias, stiffened by small companies of Redoran mercenaries and elite units of house nobles and temple ordinators and armagers. Further complicating matters was the refusal of Indoral, Dress, Flalu, and Telvani to garrison the western borders. Uh, Indoral and Dress proposed, rather than defend the western border, instead to withdraw to the interior and fight a guerrilla war. With Flalu advocating accommodation, and Telvani remaining neutral, Redoran therefore faced the prospect of standing alone against the Empire. So this is a story, I guess, of the, uh, the invasion of, of, of like the Empire taking control of Morrowind. So, Lali was like, oh yeah, sure, okay, let's do that. And Telvani's like, mm. And Redoran's like, no! So you kind of have like the full spectrum there with the, the three great houses that we um, that we mostly interacted with uh, during our playthrough of, uh, of Morwen. The situation changed radically when Vivek appeared in person in Vivek City to announce his negotiation of a treaty with e uh, Emperor Tiber Septim, reorganizing Morwen as a province of the Empire, but guaranteeing all rights of faith and self-government. Interesting, so was Vivek not... Where was Vivek before this? Hmm. A shocked temple hierarchy, which apparently had not been consulted, <laughs> greeted the announcement with awkward silence, and Doral swore they would resist to the death, with the loyal support of Dress. While Redoran, grateful for a graceful excuse to avoid facing the legions unsupported, joined with Lalu in welcoming the agreement. Telvani, seeing which way the wind blew, joined with Lalu and Redoran in supporting the treaty. Nothing is known of the circumstances of the personal meeting between Septim and Vivek, or where it took place, or the preliminaries which must have preceded the treaty. The public reason was to protect the identities of the agents involved. In the West, speculation ha has centered around the role of Zurin, uh, Arctus in brokering the agreement. In the east, rumors suggest that Vivek offered Numidium to aid in the conquest of the Altmer and Somerset Isle in return for significant concessions to preserve self-rule, house traditions, and religious practices in Morrowind. The Lord High Counselor of the Grand Council, an Indoral, refused to accept the treaty and refused to step down. He was assassinated and replaced by Halalu, House Lalu took the opportunity to settle some old scores with House Indoril, and a number of local councils changed hands in bloody coups. More blood was shed in these inner house struggles than against the Imperial Legions during Morrowind's transition from, from an independent nation to a province of the Empire. The generals of the Legions had dreaded an invasion of Morrowind. The Dunmer were widely regarded as the most dreadful and fanatic foes, further inspired by their temple and clan traditions. Interesting. Like if I, if, I, if I had to think of the uh, the different elves uh, that I would be most hesitant to want to um, face, it would actually not be the dark elves. Uh, I would think you know Bosmer um, just because of the the, the terrain. I would think uh, w waging like uh, a war in uh, Valen would would be absolutely horrendous and brutal. I, I would say similar to Black Marsh, right? Um, and, and I guess Somerset Isle, they're, they're very magic-y, but other than that, I mean, everyone kind of has magic. So yeah, I, I would actually say the Wood Elves would actually be my, my um, the, the biggest, the, the one that would scare me the most. Um, the generals had not grasped the political weaknesses of Morrowind, which Emperor Ty, uh, Tiber Septim recognized and exploited. At the same time, given the tragic depopulation and destruction experienced by the other provinces, Co uh, conquered by Septim, and the swift and efficient assimilation of Morrowind into the Imperial legal systems and economy, with, relative, re with relatively small impact on lower or upper classes of Morrowind's citizens, 
The tribunal also deserves some credit for recognizing the hopelessness of Morrowind's defense and the chance of gaining important concessions at the treaty table by being the first to offer peace. By contrast, many Endoral nobles chose to commit suicide rather than submit to the Empire, with the result that the house was significantly weakened during the period of transition, guaranteeing that they would lose much of their influence and power to House Lalu, whose influence and power was waxing uh, with its enthusiastic accommodation with the Empire. This is actually a lot more interesting than I thought it was going to be at first. Uh, the Temple Hierarchy more, skillful, more skillfully managed their loss uh, of face, remaining aloof from political struggles and earning the goodwill of the people by concentrating on their economic, educational, and spiritual warfare. And that looks like that's it. So that has been, on Morrowind, the Imperial Province, from within Oblivion. Uh, that actually was a, uh, a pretty cool read. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I guess officially this is the first... Uh, the first book in the Oblivion uh, Book Club. So, um, yeah, enjoy that. <laughs>